Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number one for this week. This is going to be a fairly short one. Uh, I took up uh, most of my time today trying to figure out uh, the forecast, and so I uh, don't have quite as much time to delve into this, but we'll delve into it a little bit. And the title for today is Statistics and Weather, and uh, basically, uh, contrary to what you might initially think, it's not as hard as uh, to understand as you might first think. So, uh, I had showed this in the daily weather update about Saturday night and Sunday, the European Ensemble snow forecast where out of all 50 ensemble members, the maximum was 10 inches of snow, uh, the 90th percentile was 4 inches, the 75th was 1, and by the time you got to the 50th, it was 0, all the way down to the minimum. And the mean was 1.1 inches, the average of all 50 members. But again, it's important to remember that if you have one or two outliers that are quite high compared to everything else, that'll distort the mean upward even though the vast majority of solutions are less than that, okay? Uh, so that's just something uh, important to keep in mind. Now, what you can do is take that data and compute a probability of different amounts of snow, assuming you have what's called a normal distribution of data, which is your classic bell curve, okay? So using that European data, uh, the highest amount was 10, 10 inches, and then the lowest one was uh, around one, and then of course there were several members that were around zero. But basically, the probability of getting that 10 inches is very close to zero. Not zero itself, but very close to it. And then you can see this is sort of like half of the bell curve, all right? And so by the time you get to one inch, the probability was somewhere between 18 and 19 percent, not all that terribly high. And that's because so many of the members didn't have anything at all. Okay, so here's your classic bell curve, and, and this is, refers to what we call a normal distribution of data. So think of a uh, bunch of students taking a test, okay, and you've got the majority of the scores are maybe between, I don't know, uh, 65 and 85, something like that, and then you've got the really high scores above 85 and the really low scores below 65. So the way the term standard deviation is defined is that it basically is the middle of the bell curve, and it's about 68%, the middle 68% of all those test scores or whatever type of data you're looking at. So uh, you see this 34.1 and 34.1, 68.2, roughly 68%. And this is where most of the solutions are in the middle of the bell curve. Then if you go out two standard deviations, then 95% of the solutions are going to be from here to here, and if you go out three standard deviations, then 99.7%, all but 0.3%, are going to be between here and here, okay? And anything outside of that is truly an outlier. And this is why uh, I have advocated, instead of using a normal high, a single value for a given day, that we take a look at a normal range because every year is different. The weather patterns are different. There's natural variability. So why not take plus or minus one standard deviation from the average for the date and say, hey, if you're in here, then this is normal, okay? If you get out into this region here or this region here, then, yeah, I'll give you credit for being a little bit abnormal uh, for that particular time of year, okay? So that's the graphical explanation for what I've been trying to advocate for. Now, standard deviation itself, there's a rule called the 68-95-99.7 rule, okay? Now, in a normal distribution, 68% of the solutions are in the middle of the bell curve, plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. 95% of the solutions are within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the solutions are within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. And the more variance you have in your data, then the larger these standard deviations are going to be. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is percentiles. Basically, what this does is tell you what percentage of the solutions or the scores, if you will, are below a certain value. So let's say, for instance, there are 100 students taking a test, and out of all the test scores, uh, the 75th percentile is 86. That means that 75% of the scores were below 86 and 25% of the scores were above 86. 
Now, the 50th percentile is not always the same as the mean. Okay, you might think it is, but it's not. A few outliers can distort the mean higher or lower, but the 50th percentile basically tells you the middle of the pack. Half the scores are above that, half the scores are below that, and sometimes the mean is very, very close to the 50th percentile, but not always. Again, it has a lot to do with whether or not you have a couple of really weird outliers that don't really fit in with the rest of the data. Okay, that is bonus weather video number one for this week. Hope that makes a little bit of sense. Hope the percentage uh, the, or the probability of you understanding this is high. Uh, we'll have another bonus weather video for you coming up on Friday and, of course, another daily weather update coming up for you tomorrow afternoon. We do have a lot to keep an eye on for the upcoming weekend, and so we'll have a lot to talk about. Next time we'll do that is tomorrow afternoon. All right, folks, have a wonderful Tuesday evening, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.